the jail was built, started in 1876. It took about two years to build, and uh, and then the first sheriff actually lived here in 1878. And what our place is a little different, and it it, it may be that more places are this way too. But I tell people to ask in present tense if anything they want to know, if a sheriff is here, if they're trying to get a hold of somebody, ask in present tense because we've had one night going really well and some names, everything. We didn't see anything, we heard everything, and all the meters, everything's going off. We even got full names, that doesn't happen too often. And then somebody said, Well, how'd you die? Another key for us to know. Uh, back in the 1870s, when this place was open, the sheriff had to live in an attached building to the jail. And that's where the sheriff lived, on that side of the wall. This is a common kitchen, and everything over here is the jail side. Another metal door with another lock. Another door oh, gee. with another lock which we'd love to be able to find the key for that. And that is all steel. And then another door with another lock. Oh, is this a rotating one? Yeah. What is what is a turnstile? It is a one-way door. If we got the door wide open, but they still can't get out. Enter. I'll spin the door around you. Okay, cool. Now, nobody ever escaped. Two people did when they did a, when they bolted that thing, they were about ready to step down. They, un, they were able to jimmy it loose and then get out from there. Notice the two phones? Mm hmm. They're in a cell. So, you lay claim for the first cell phone in town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And at this point, usually I ask, how much did you pay to get in? It costs a lot more to get out. Does it? It does. It does. <laughs> so I'll see you later. No. <laughs> These first two set of cells on the right here, which would be the west side, they tend to scratch people. Oh, really? It starts out as a burn. You just, it's a burn. It's a burn. Finally, you check. And you'll see one or three scratches. I've never seen an even number. Okay, cool. And then just like it's getting worse, and you go on and you forget about it. An hour later, it's like it was never there. Yeah. And um, our biggest claim to fame here is John Dillinger. Do you know who John Dillinger is? Here we go. No, I have no clue. Okay. He's one of the biggest gangsters, uh, of, especially in the Midwest back in the 1930s, uh -huh. and uh, he robbed a lot of banks, and he was in jail for 10 years, and he learned how to rob banks in jail. Where else would you learn? <laughs> from the best, they said. Now, I don't know from his documentary if he learned or read from a guy who actually did told you how to do everything about robbing banks. So when he got out, he had his eye on Belleville, which mm -hmm. is south of here, Blackford and Salina, Ohio. And so you go in, befriend the sheriff, find out what what uh, their staff is like, what kind of cars, what kind of guns. If old Sam wanted to retire in a month and he worked second shift, you want to rob the bank on the second shift. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then most of the cars back then, they were driving four and six on them. So he always stole a V8. Hmm. Cadillacs yeah. and some other Oldsmobiles and anyway they have a list of stuff. But when he came in, he befriended the sheriff, well, I guess nerves or whatever, and really casing it over thinking it maybe. He was quite the card player here. Never incarcerated, so he played a lot of cards here. So um work, working up his nerve and a lot of the a lot of the uh Deputies, um, grandkids talked about us and how he was a great card player and, and a very nice guy and all that stuff. So, 
walk, I'd say most stuff happens between 12 and 3.30, and that's pretty much the only stereotypic yeah. of this place. I was walking through, shutting off lights, and looked up, and at the top of the steps, there was a guy, he was maybe about 5'4", mm-hmm. but he was massive. Like, somebody took a normal person and just, and he was standing there like this, and he had these big arms, big legs, a neck, and a huge head, and he's a shadow figure. Yeah. You know, okay. So I couldn't, I just saw, all I saw was the outline. So without taking my eyes off of him, I reached for the switch, turn it on, gone. Gone. Okay. TV, it's a hat rack or something, you know. Yeah. But just so I shut the light off, see what kind of shadows, and oh no, it was still gone. Hmm. It was the only cell overflow, this, that, and the other. The door is in the basement along with the women's cell door. Okay. So they were cells. And they closed in 1995, the cell, or the jail did, the tail end. And in the early 1990s, they were condemned because they didn't have an interrogation room and a soundproof room. Hmm. So that's why you see the outlines. It was so new looking, I took it out right away. But hastily trying to get it reopened, they just stuck boards up um, and made it real quick. And then I'm guessing mixed what color paint they had left. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to come up with this. But yeah, they're still graffiti where they actually have. Uh, more so the more this chips away oh yeah you can yeah. see and the deeper it goes I, that's a notice so it's got to be true oh. that becky johnson is a and i'm guessing i'm guessing biatch <laughs> oh okay see i was thinking a bitter woman so a bitter woman yeah, okay what are you doing see we always get tabbies we, we've had five already so they have their what are you doing they have their uniform on we don't have to get them uniform you gonna be on a channel? No. But to the right of that bar, there was a, a little, I guess like an Indian gnome, and I don't know what they call them. Indians don't call them gnomes. But uh, they're little jokesters. And it was first spotted right there. Hmm. And it's so grainy that the cameraman, and they, this film crew shoots a lot of, they shoot about four places a year, and it shows the IMAX mm -hmm. in Indy. Hopefully they still do it oh, cool. at Halloween. Yeah. Um, but the camera guy was swinging the camera, panning, and uh, the so the camera guy didn't see it. The person editing the film didn't see it. It was the person standing over the editor's shoulder. So, huh. And you can see it. And they caught it. Yeah. And you, it just goes like this as the camera's passing. Yeah. So this is a dungeon, and even the sheriff's department referred to it as the dungeon. Yeah. Uh, designed for, well, they said at one time they could hold 101 people in the entire jail, not here. In the entire thing. In the entire jail, probably before all the rules. Okay. Like yeah. In the 18th. Yeah. Uh, but they used it here is to, if you're really just out of it, you've lost it, either. Physically, mentally, whatever, um, they would put you down here until they decide what to do with you. Now, if you're just an outrageously horrible drunk, yeah, they sleep it off and get you next day. If you're mentally insane, yeah, they would keep you down here till they knew where to send you. Hmm. Mental institutions and stuff. So, and we can't claim anything. So, even when Dillinger supposedly slid them a bunch of money, if I ever get caught in your county, you'll let me go, right? That's what he said, how to do it. Did the sheriff take it, or did he even get to that point? Was he too nervous? Nobody's ever going to know. So, now, we'll go under the jail cell. How long have you been ghost hunting? Mm, for a while, but I've been doing a lot of uh, bigger locations and, like, more public places. I used to do private homes for a long time. Okay. So, um, I've been doing actual, like, locations for a year and a half. Okay. So do you know what holds energy? True. Like limestone? Yeah. Okay. Guess what you got your hand on? Limestone? Yeah. <laughs> this is granite. Unfinished granite. Yeah. All the rest is limestone. What else? Mm, I'm putting you on the spot. I don't know. Crystal? Like quartz? Quartz crystal? 
Everywhere you see it shiny, it's quartz crystals. It's all over. You can't look without seeing quartz crystals. The kitty's leading the tour. Where are we going? He does help with my sanity <laughs> sometimes because when I see something and he's looking at it too. Yeah. And I'm not. <laughs> And I'm not crazy. Oh, kitty, kitty. Go away. Go away. Go away. Uh, but one one night, uh, couch was over there, TV was over here, kind of vice you know, flip. And it's about 1.30 and I stood up to go into the kitchen. And right where I'm sitting at my feet was a woman's shoe. A woman's shoe. Yep. A right footed shoe really wore out um, like an everyday around the house shoe. Mm -hmm. He didn't see it before his time. And uh, um, it looked like 1920s, I'm guessing. But it was so wore out. It was a dark gray color. What color was left? Mm -hmm. And the person's foot had a, and I don't know if they still have them or not anymore. Had a hammer toe or a carbuncle where the big toe was pointing so far in that it leaves a huge bump. And um, the only way to fix them is to break the bone and straighten Ew. it out. Yeah. Um, I think they said it was from wearing high heels or pointed. Yeah. But I'm not sure. I don't know if that's a naturally occurring thing or not. But, um, uh, well, okay, well, there shouldn't be a woman chewing here. So I went to go pick it up and I got. Half a step, and right then, out of the, right out of the, where the ankle is, mm -hmm. this white silk stocking started forming in a clockwise pattern, and it just kept going and kept going. It started to take on a woman's calf. Got up about so high, and got into this beautiful, intricate leg, and this is just as white as can be, but it didn't slow it down. It kept going in a clockwise pattern, and it got about this much lace. And that much underneath, so about so tall, with a full, like a lady's, um, you know, in, you know, like it's the lady's inside of it, yeah. and uh, shape. And it got to the top and started doing a half moon hitch or whatever. And as soon as it was done, the sock fell straight down onto the shoe. The shoe took off with the sock flapping behind it, went right underneath that door, but there's only about that much room. The sock got just a hair brighter, as I recall. Mm -hmm. It just got a little bit brighter. It didn't make a single sound. That's crazy. Yeah. The guys that spent the night here, I was working on my laptop. And when you work with your laptop, it gets hot when it's on yeah. your lap. So I went to cool it off. I balanced on a couple books so the fans could run. And I went in to see what they were doing. They were editing from the night before. And, gosh, oh no, my laptop. So I go running back in. My laptop's right where I left it. Both cats going, going nuts. <laughs> and so right then I came back out and the two guys came up and said, we think you came from upstairs. And I said, hold it, hold it. Grab your stuff. <laughs> Grab your stuff. <laughs> so they got their cameras and stuff and came back and then lined up behind me. Oh, yeah. Well, granted, they were going to go in front first before I stopped them. So I got up about here, and that clock, not the one hanging, but the one down low, yeah, the chimed one on the... 11. I'd set it up there about six months earlier, ran for about 40 minutes, and stopped. Huh. Well, I said, did you guys start that clock? I said, no. So we went on up. I noticed his picture was missing. It had fallen, rolled over, and started the clock. Oh my gosh. Right on the top. That's so funny. It was 11.03, time we got up here, and it was 11.03. So, what's the odds? Somebody here through the week, that would fall, start at the right time. I mean, just too many yeah. coincidences, but anyway.
spear box.
I'm kind of like trying to think of what kind of like energy is here and I'm thinking more of it's like on the residual side um especially with that story that he was talking about like with the footsteps and stuff that seems like maybe it's kind of like happening like every so often and it's kind of in the same manner so I wonder if that's more like a residual thing and that's maybe why we're not getting too many responses um you know it's not very often that we run into something that's um residual I mean, I'm sure that we do, it happens, but I'm saying, like, of all the places that we've really been, like, we haven't really communicated with too much residual energy, because residual is kind of that one thing that doesn't really, like, respond to you that often, you know? And they, um, a lot of the times, like, they don't know there's a time difference, or they don't know that um, things are different. So, 
I feel like it's going to be pretty hard to kind of get a little bit of evidence going here, but that's, um, that's neither here nor there. That I don't know if that's accurate or not. That's just my assumption. Um, I could be very wrong about that. I don't know until I've been here for a little bit longer, but that's just what I'm gathering so far. Um, we've done, so I guess this would be our second EVP so far, and then we've done one EVP, and then, um, two spirit box. So I've only, I've only been here for like maybe an hour, not even that long. So that's just my um, assessment so far. It's kind of hard when I don't take. Um, okay, well, I just started. Because as soon as I turn, wait, there's my bag. Let's go over there. No, it's not picking it up. Are you still there? Okay, yes, I know. Okay, that was really weird. Um, well, I know that we've discussed, like, the whole thing about chairs before, so I don't know what that was. I just happened to look up because I was getting my stuff ready, and then there was, yeah, like that. Can you raise your hand? Can you raise your hand all the way up like this? Okay, so it didn't really raise its hand. I'm guessing, wait, does that count as raising its hand? Can you raise both your hands? Above your head? I think I'm just talking to myself here. I'm pretty sure that it's just getting confused because of the dryer, which doesn't. Oh, wait! Okay. So that tells me, nope, that was not the dryer. Okay. I thought it was the dryer. That was not the dryer. Thank you so much. That is great. Um, it did that thing at the tail. There it is. Wait, so if I keep picking it up, can you move over? Can you scooch over? So that way you're not in front of the dryer? Can you do that for me? Like move over so that way you're not in front of the dryer? Are you dancing? You know what would be absolutely great? Is if you came and spoke into this. Oops. Right here. That would be wonderful. Just tell me anything. Tell me your name, your favorite color, you know, what day it is, anything. Because this device right here is going to be able to pick you up. Do you want to come back or are you sick of me? I think I'd be sick of me too.
gonna try some more spare box. See if I can get that to work. Oh. Well, the cat was gonna be my partner in crime, but he gone now. Oh, hey, there he is. Hi. Hi, Evidently food time, not investigating time. I definitely need to come up with like a new system for how to handle like all this stuff on my own. I'm just gonna come down the steps and then I'm gonna show you guys the outside of the building. Just to give you all a little presentation. I mean, I can see it. I'm hoping that you guys can, can see it. Anyway, that's the old Blackbird County jail episode, guys. I'm excited, although I have a headache. <laughs>